G'day again guys and thank you for joining me. So today's piece was completely unplanned. I was sitting in my office working on an upcoming piece which is going to be quite much larger uh, but unfortunately I just didn't have a sheet of paper that size and I was going to have to make a trip to the art shop before I could get any more work done. But I wanted to draw. I was just really really in the mood to get something down on paper. I was feeling a little bit frustrated but then I saw it. In the corner of my room, an offcut of the Archer's Hot Press paper. If you have a look up in that top right hand corner, you can see the little watermark that they leave on the corner of the sheet of paper. Now I usually use this little corner piece for my demonstration pieces or for just testing out colour combinations or new techniques. But today this sheet was going to be used for something way more fun than that. At first I was just intending to do a quick colour pencil drawing. And then out of the blue, I remembered. I haven't played with my Inktense pencils in ages. And last time I played with the Inktense, I ended up creating something really, really colourful and bold and a piece that I actually really like. Suddenly, I knew what I had to do. I dug through my reference photos looking for something really bold and bright, something that I could be completely over the top with. And then I found this image that I had saved from wildlifereferencephotos.com ages ago of this gorgeous little clownfish in his anemone. Well, what could be more colourful than tropical fish? I had to do it. Now, unlike most of my pieces, I had put absolutely no thought into this piece. I had done no planning, no sketches, no line work. So I decided to just be incredibly loose with this and create the entire piece using very simple shapes instead of trying to create a detailed drawing like I usually would. My plan was to use my Inktense pencils and blocks to create a really bright and loose underpainting. I covered the background with a thick layer of deep sea blues, but for the fish and anemone I kept the ink layer fairly light so that I would be able to add a colour pencil layer on top. I have found that my waxy luminance pencils stick way better to this Inktense base than my Polychromos, but they still don't work very well if the paper is too thickly covered with ink. Luckily the Inktense have incredibly bold colours, so even a light wash adds some serious punches of colour to my page. You can see here that I'm not being precise or even careful about how I'm laying down that ink. As a medium, the Inktense is capable of putting down so much more detail than what I'm doing here, but I'm just using them to try and get the main shapes and values into place so that I can layer my details over the top with my pencils. At this point, I did have my reference photo close on hand. While I wasn't aiming to create a realistic image, I still needed to have that photo close by so that I could get a good idea of what kind of shapes and tones I was looking for, especially in areas like the clownfish's stripes and the anemone shapes. By the time I had this layer done, I wanted to know which areas needed to be lighter or in shadow and have the main features of the clownfish in place. It was looking rough, but I was actually really happy with this base layer, so I set it aside to let it dry overnight. As always, I started with the eyes, and I chose all kinds of bold yellows and oranges and reds to work around the body of this clownfish, so that he would really pop out against the blue and purple surroundings. The luminance pencils lay down very nicely over that intense base and blend together really easily on the surface. So I was able to get some really nice colour blends which I found very satisfying to lay down. And around the edges of the fish I added a small rim of light blue which comes from the intense lighting of the fish tank. I really enjoyed this little feature and I think it really helped make that orange pop even more. For the dark stripes on the fish, I used my Derwent Lightfast pencil in the colour Nightshade, which was absolutely perfect. It's a really deep, deep purple colour, which gave me a really dark, almost black look against the, all of the colours that I had down there. It was way more intense than if I had just used a black pencil, and I'm really going to enjoy using this pencil in the future. After seeing how well that nightshade pencil went down onto this surface, I started using a few more of those Derwent Light Fasts on the body of the fish as well. Using that arctic blue and the oyster shade to get some of the more interesting lighting effects around the fish. 
The Derwent Lightfast worked just as well as the Luminance pencils on this surface and they all played very nicely together which I was so happy about. Finally it was time to move on to the Anemone and I did have a little bit of trouble on this very top layer. Unfortunately I did struggle a little bit to get that base layer in place and I'd added just a few too many layers of white and the pencil wasn't sticking here as nicely as it should. It's the one thing that really disappoints me about this piece that I just didn't plan that little bit further ahead but it just wouldn't be an artwork if something didn't go wrong so I just let it be as it was and kept moving across the piece. This was where I really got to sit back and enjoy the process. With all of those shapes all planned out in advance I was able to just grab a handful of my brightest pinks and purples and just go to town adding texture and colour to this piece. This was so much fun. I wasn't thinking about the process at all. I was just on autopilot trying to make this look as brilliant and as bright as I could. My luminance turquoise blue really was the star of the show here as I used it for that rim lighting around the edge of each of those shapes. It just made everything pop so much more and I was so happy to see this coming together. Once again I used that Derwent Nightshade colour to really get into those shadows and when I blended that out with some of the lighter shades it mixed to a really brilliant pretty purple that just went brilliant with all of the other colours that I had down. I did make some of the anemone further from the viewer to be a little bit more muted in shades of light blue and purple so I could give the eyes a little bit of a rest and allow the anemone up close to the viewer to give a real punch of colour to the eyeballs. This doesn't look like any anemone I have ever seen in my life, but what fun this was to draw. Finally, it was time to pull off the tape and see what I had. This is always so scary because it would be just devastating to rip a piece now after all of that work. But I just love that clean, crisp edge that the tape leaves. So ridiculously satisfying. And just look at all of those pencils I've got left on my desk as I finish this piece. So many colours I don't get to use anywhere near often enough, especially not all together. So here's the finished piece. Even with all of my editing I can't quite get these colours to look just as brilliant as they are in person. This piece was completely unplanned but I had so much fun doing it that I'm really glad that I just didn't have the right size piece of paper on that day. I would just like to take a moment to thank my patrons. You guys help make this all possible. I don't have a real time video of this one up for you guys yet since I am going on a little surprise family holiday as soon as I upload this but fingers crossed I'll be able to bring you guys some fantastic new reference photos so keep an eye out for that. So this one was a little bit different to my normal work, but I do hope that you've enjoyed this. Please leave me a like or a comment to tell me what you think, and if you'd like to see some more of my work, then why not hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys.